we are ready. Roll call. Chairman Dillon? Here. Vice Chair Berry? Here. Commissioner Bubbas? Here. Commissioner Bynum? Here. Commissioner Cox? Commissioner Finney? Here. Commissioner Hamilton? Here. Commissioner Leahy? Here. Commissioner Latour? Here. Commissioner Stebbins? Here. You have uh, one open position and nine members present. You do have a quorum. Thank you. We will need a motion for the minutes, please. We'll have to get someone from downstairs. Right, here, I'd like to move for approval of the minutes of the November 3rd, 2016 meeting of the Little Rock Planning Commission. Favor. All in favor and all opposed. Okay, our minutes will pass. We are ready for our presentation, please. The uh, Little Rock Planning Commission subdivision consent agenda. December 15, 2016, items for consent withdrawal, item three, file number S-1784, advanced auto subdivision site plan review, located at 1421 through 1505 Revson Park Road. The applicant submitted a request dated November 25, 2016, requesting withdrawal of this item without prejudice. Staff is supportive of the withdrawal request. Items for consent deferral, item D, file number S-1776, Mountain Valley Preliminary Plat, located at 2516 Highway 10. This item was deferred from the Little Rock Board of Directors meeting on December 6, 2016 to the Board of Directors meeting on March 7, 2017. Staff recommends deferral of this item to the Commission's March 16, 2017 public hearing to allow resolution of the appeal of the Planning Commission's denial of proposed wastewater treatment facility, which would serve the proposed subdivision. Item number seven, file number Z-5758-G, PBK Development, Lot C, short form POD, located in the 15,000 block of Canis Road, just west of Canis and Pride Valley Roads intersections. The applicant submitted a request dated November 30th, 2016, requesting deferral of this item to the February 2nd, 2017 public hearing. Staff is supportive of the deferral request. Item number 12, file number Z-9183, Wildwood Trails Long Form PDR, located on the south side of Denny Road in the 19,000 block of Denny Road. Staff recommends deferral of this item to the February 2nd, 2017 public hearing to allow the Little Rock Wastewater Commission to review the request to tie on to the city's wastewater collection system. Items for consent approval. Item C, file number Z-9171, Levy short form PDR, located at 622 South Valentine Street. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number one, File number S-867G, Chenal Valley Phase 18, Revised Preliminary Plat, Epernay Place, located south of Highway 10 and west of Chenal Parkway. Staff recommends approval of the request to allow reduced side yard setbacks of seven feet for the lots within the various spaces as proposed. Item number two, file number S-1538-M, Gateway Town Center, Lot 4 Replat, located on Bass Pro Parkway and Bass Pro Drive. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends prior to the issuance of a grading permit for the new lots, the applicant provide a written agreement between this property owner and the property owner to the east, allowing access to the drive serving the development to the east. And staff recommends approval of the variance request from the city's land alteration ordinance to allow grading of future phases with the installation of the basic infrastructure for the subdivision. Item number four, file number Z-3735-A, R and RT Properties, short form POD, located at 13100 Chenal Parkway. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number five, file number Z-5649F, Stagecoach West 2, long form PCD, located at 10915 Stagecoach Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. 
Staff recommends approval of the variance request to allow grading of future phases with the development of the first phase. Item number six, file number Z-5758-F, PBK Development Lot B, short form POD, located in the 15,000 block of Canis Road, just west of Canis and Pride Valley Road intersection. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request to allow grading of future phases with the development of the first phase. Item number eight, file number Z-6054-B, FITS Auto Expansion Long Form PCD, located at 8421 Stagecoach Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions, as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request to allow grading outside the development area with the construction of the proposed parking area. Item number nine, file number Z-7875-E, Hayes Development Revised Short Form POD, located at 13423 Canis Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number 10, file number Z-8310-B, Smith Development Revised Short Form POD, located at 7801 Cantrell Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number 11, File number Z-8873-A, Hall Davidson Building, short form PCD, located at 201 to 205 West Capitol Avenue. In addition to the request to allow commercial and office uses on the lower level, the applicant is requesting to redevelop the upper floors with multifamily or a hotel. Staff re recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Item number 13, file number Z-9184, Little Rock Port Authority College Station Sports Complex, Long Form PID, located on the north side of Sloan Drive, 0.3 miles west of Mo Mooney Road, Manny Road. Uh, staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions, as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff recommends approval of the variance request to allow grading of future phases with the development of the first phase. Item number 14, file number Z-9185, Genesis Datacom, short form PDC, located at 13008 Lawson Road. Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. And item number 15, MSP 1601, Master Street Plan Amendment, 4th Street, Alexander, Arkansas. Staff recommends approval of the applicant's amended request to allow the downgrading of 4th Street from a minor arterial street classification to a collector street standard classification. And that concludes the consent agenda. Thank you, Ms. James. Can we get a motion for the consent agenda, please? Yes, Madam Chair, I move for approval of the consent agenda as read by staff with all staff recommendations therein. I'll second. All in favor? And all opposed? The consent agenda will pass. Thank you all for coming. If you were just, if your item was just read, you are welcome to go. You, of course, may stay and hear the other items that are on the agenda, which Ms. James will cover here in just a minute. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you for coming. Okay, that leads on the regular agenda, item A, Stonecrest Apartments, short form PDR, and item B, Alexander Mountain Preliminary Plat. Thank you, Ms. James. May we get the applicant for Stonecrest, please? First. I get to go first. I'm sorry. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you always I guess I me. should let you read first. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> sorry. 
Item A, file number Z-9105-A, Stonecrest Apartments, short form PDR, located at 9701 Baseline Road. The request is a rezoning from R2 single family to PDR, planned development residential, to allow the existing apartment complex to be recognized as an allowable use. The de development includes 54 units of multifamily housing, 48 of the units will be one bedroom units, and six of the... Um, the units will be three bedroom units. Within the existing buildings, the applicant is proposing an office, custodial office, and laundry facility. The site plan indicates the placement of 81 parking spaces to serve the future residents. The zoning ordinance for multifamily is typically based on one and a half spaces per unit. With uh, 54 units, that would typically require the placement of 81 parking spaces. So the applicant has indicated parking to serve the proposed use. The um, staff has reviewed their previous recommendation and which was a approval and based on multiple site visits to the property and the neighborhood staff does not feel the placement of the parking as proposed by the applicant is appropriate staff previously raised concerns with the overall development plan of the site and the lack of parking to serve the proposed number of multifamily units the applicant has addressed this concern by reducing the number of units providing additional parking by placing the minimum parking as typically required by the ordinance on the site However, staff feels the proposed parking located along the northern perimeter adjacent to several homes could potentially have an adverse impact on the homes and allow for future encroachment of the parking into the neighborhood. Staff recommends denial. Thank you, Ms. James. May we get the applicant, please? Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Madam Chair, members of the commission, it's a pleasure to be here again. Um, this project has been before you before, and it's gone through multiple iterations to to uh, uh, change it and to try to address concerns. And we really appreciate city staff working hard to help us kind of get this project to where it meets m at least minimum, and in some cases exceeds the code requirements. Uh, it was very difficult to do that with these um, the existing conditions there, but. Um, we just want you to know that it's not going to be anything like it is now. We know that that pro property has uh, people, are, are, the owners have a service that comes every week to pick up trash, to clean it up, and continues to have dumping on there. There's a mattress there that's so heavy they can't get it up without some kind of a uh, thing, so that, that's lined up to get it next week. So any neighbor's concerns... Uh, about the condition of the property now, our guys are doing whatever they can to take care of that in an expeditious way. So we, we want to look forward to what this project is going to be. Um, and I, I just want to say that we, I have Jim Martin here, the project manager. He's the nuts and bolts guy. Um, uh, he, he knows, he can answer any technical questions that I can't. And uh, we just wanted to go forward with it and give you our presentation and uh, and hear what the neighbor opposition is and and any questions, comments, good or bad from you. We appreciate having that so that we can address, uh, can attempt to address those. And this is an infill development. Infill is is one of the stated goals and objectives of the city of Little Rock. Instead of sprawl. To find a piece of property that needs to be redeveloped and redeveloped. That's what they're trying to do. This also meets the the, the objective or the uh, of the city to not to demolish structures that can be rehabilitated. Uh, there are three structures there. They're very sound. This project will strip the whole interior, water, electricity, um, and Mr. Martin will explain all that this is going to go into this. We've reduced the number of units in order to get the parking on site. When it came to you once before, they had uh, placed parking off site on the other side, on the east side of Winston. That's eliminated. That's not part of this project. Although, if this is approved, the uh, radial intersection there on each side of Winston at baseline will be meet, meet code requirements. The, this project will do all of the infrastructure requirements required street improvements, curb, gutter, sidewalks. Um, it will be fenced with a nice iron, well, wrought iron looking metal fence. And then there will be a six foot wooden privacy fence on the north side where the staff said its concerns were. Um, and, 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 and Jim can 
go into more detail about that. But we have been working with staff. We've had several meetings. We thought we had it all, There's their concerns met. And um, it was uh, changed last week for some reason. So we would appreciate if you have questions, concerns, please express them to us so we can respond to that. Would you, um, you have a site plan? Okay. Can, can, he, can I stand up here with Mr. Martin and answer sure. any questions that you have? Okay. Dave, would you not like the opposition to go and then? Yeah, that'd be fine. You want to do that? Sure. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jones. We have one card. Uh, John Huglin. Did I pronounce that right? It's close enough. <laughs> I've been here before. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my sister and I live one house off this place. It's it's concrete bunker, just like they said. How you gonna rework the electric and the sewer and the plumbing without totally tearing it down? The air conditioning's on the roof are stripped. They say they come around once a week, but they don't keep the plywood up every week. Uh, Windows are down, doors are down, uncovered. I see it looks like they're going to buy the house behind it, put parking there to get it off of uh, off the building by more than six foot. Well, you know, all this still doesn't make anything a silk purse out of a sow's ear. It doesn't do it. They claim they want to spend a million dollars. Well, I think they're gambling a million they're liable to lose because of the area, and it'll come right back just like it was before. That's not the nicest of neighborhoods now, and this will just bring it down. We've been down before. The police calls dropped 80% when that place is closed. They need to fence it, but they gotta keep the gate shut. They need an on-site manager at all times, not somebody off wherever. You know, just, to me, they, they're liable to lose their money. I think it's uh, spending way too much money for the area it's in. Don't see it, just don't see it working. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Would the applicant like to address the opposition, please? Yes, I would. <laughs> um, as far as um, the electrical and plumbing and, uh, and so forth, uh, the buildings are actually designed with a maintenance corridor down the middle of each one of the buildings where it's presently at now. Um, basically, there's a false wall it actually has a concrete wall that divides the building completely. It's a firewall. And about 18 to 24 inches off of that is a false wall where all the plumbing, electrical, and HVAC goes. But we are actually taking all the uh, HVACs off the roof. We're going to be putting a pitch roof, as you can see on that. And uh, we're actually adding PTAC units to each one, so each one will have its own uh, individual um, heating and cooling system. Um, as far as... Uh, everything else go, we are actually taking one of the houses that we bought uh, behind there and we're actually relocating it to over off at Fair Park. So, and we're just utilizing the area for parking to accommodate the, the city's requirements at 1.5 parking spaces per unit. And uh, I think uh, if you guys got any questions, I mean, uh, I, we are gonna be putting over a million dollars into this property and it is gonna be a, I think it's uh, well worth the, the effort because, I mean, we're going to be putting in a good, um, you know, well remodeled building, uh, putting it back into use, and of course city tax dollars will be generated from this as well, and um, we are intending to do just that, you see right there in front. It's uh, it's going to be a complete overhaul, and I think it's well worth the investment. I think the, the, the neighborhood could stand for some improvement, you know, and this would be definitely something that would work well with their, you know, neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question for you. A couple of issues that he had or concerns was, d is there an on-site manager? We are going to have a, a manager there during the uh, working the hours um, from, I believe, uh, 9 o'clock till 5 o'clock. Um, but no, we were not planning on having one, but that's not to say that we can't put one there. Okay, and does the gate um, have a key access? Yes, or? it will be key-coded. Okay. It's each one of the, the two access points uh, are going to be on Winston. You'll have the north and the south uh, entrance. The exit on Herrick is the only exit only. So um, there is, it's going to be limited. It's only, everybody's going to have their own uh, 
uh, key code to get into the apartment. It'll be assigned to that unit. And so we'll see if there's a lot of heavy traffic. Whoever is, you know, having more than, well, I don't know how you could say it, normal visitors, if they're having too many, then we can monitor that and ask questions, and it would draw, or draw our attention. We are concerned about the, um, the history of this building, too, as well as everybody else is. But um, we, that's why we addressed it with uh, the fence, the privacy fence. On the north side, where they're having, um, I guess this, this uh, staff was concerned, there's only about four or five spots that would be actually facing it. And it is actually going to be actually toward the backyard of the, um, the neighbor next door. And then their house is actually, that's their garage side. So it's not going to be facing any of the living quarters or anything like that. So the opposition, you would prefer to have the property sitting like it is. I'm just trying to make sure I understand this. Okay. Okay. Do um, do we have some other questions? Yes, Mr. Latour. How long have you owned it? Um, we've had it for about a little over a year now. Yes. Yeah, a couple of questions. In terms of each of the units, um, you talked about the uh, heating and cooling that's going to use. Will each unit be individually metered electrically as well as gas? Uh, I believe so. We were talking with the, uh, the electrician. I believe we are going to have meter bases on each one of them. I believe so. Okay. But we are going to be doing um, the, the water system is going to be heated by uh, tankless water heaters. We're going to have uh, on direct or direct demand water heaters. So that's going to be taken on by us. We'll supply the water and the uh, um, the gas. Are you do, and, and that the, yeah, that's a nice unit. Are you doing anything else that's uh, considered energy efficiency or trying? Well, to, the buildings uh, themselves are actually energy efficient. So I mean, they they <laughs> really are. <laughs> can't get much better than that. Huh? You really can't get much. No. Yeah. I, well, I mean, you could spray foam on them, and that's about it. Um, but they are really considered. I don't know what the R factor is on, but I. I would put it up somewhere in the neighborhood of around uh, 19 to 20 percent, and plus with uh, you know the exposure only on the north and south side of each one of the units, it's going to be well to, easy to heat and cool. And they each each one of the each one of the rooms, like the the one bedrooms, are going to actually have two their two pack TP tack units, and the one for the master bedroom and one for the living quarters or the living room. Yeah. Have, have you all set a uh, rental rate for the one bedrooms as well as the three bedrooms? It's been discussed. We're looking at somewhere between uh, four eighty-five to five fifteen, somewhere in that neighborhood. But of course, it's going to have to be market generated. And what about lease term? Um, they'll be one year lease, and they will be. We have um, our uh, manager is actually going to be doing background checks, and so they will be scrutinized quite considerably. I hope so. Okay. Yes, Mr. Latour. What's this green stuff on the, on the very north boundary? Oh, that's grass. That's our. There's that, no that, that, for anything between the parking lot and the. Yeah, there's going to be a privacy fence. There's a the privacy fence. fence, and then there's a lot of landscaping that's going to be there for bushes and um, our. I mean, I, I'll, I'll leave that up to the designers. <laughs> Do we have a see through? No, sir. No, you will not. This is a, a six foot uh, tall wooden privacy fence that separates, and this will be actually above six foot because we're going to be raising it up about another two foot above that. Oh, for, forgive me, but I thought you said it would be a, a broad iron, broad iron fence. On the public side, on the on Herrick and Baseline and Winston, will I ha actually have a wrought iron fence just like the one over at the uh, highway department. Okay, thanks. Yes, you Mr. Babis. I'll agree with your comments that this this property has been a sow's ear for a long time, and mm -hmm. the crime rate and the, all the calls. I mean, I'm I'm not surprised every time I pass by there. It seemed like there was a police car there. So, you know, you are spending a million dollars on the property. I just want to get that on the record as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's important, and I don't. Uh, this may be a question for staff, but. Um, I would hate to approve this and then some of these things not happen as proposed. Um, do you already have funding secure? Yes. The loan is already approved by the bank? It is. Um, I'm trying to think of what else might could cause it. You know, um, I think the, the biggest thing here is actually having a quality piece of development. What you have drawn here actually 
it looks good. Um, and it'll to look me. just like that when we get done with it. We're going to paint the brick. It's uh, right now just a regular standard uh, clay brick that's not finished at all. So it's going to all be um, exteriorly um, taken, uh, painted. Uh, we're putting a, a pitched roof on it, and it's going to be, um, I guess, black would probably be the best way to use it. Um, but it's uh, it's going to be all metal around the, on the gables ends and. <clears throat> okay, and just so we're clear, did you amend your application to have twenty four seven security there? Or 24-7 manager there, excuse me? No, we haven't amended it. We, we would take recommendations. I mean, if, this, if that's a criteria, but I'm, I mean, we would we'd be willing to entertain that for sure. I'm not allowed to recommend things. That's not part of my, <laughs> what I can do, <laughs> okay. unfortunately. But it, um, it, is, it is something that if it's a concern, we would be more than certainly um, willing to do that. The applicant can amend the application. And remember, this is a planned development. So not just the use, but the site plan is also be so the fencing, the landscaping, what's in front of you is should this be approved, that's how the project will ultimately need to be developed. What is your estimated uh, construction yeah, completion? About six months. I, I would I would like to say I, I can't say that um, I recommend it, but I can say I, I I will not vote for it unless the applicant. Can I say that? <laughs> I will not vote for the application as it stands unless it's amended to include 24/7 management. I think that's legal. Are you are you wanting to amend your? Are you voluntarily wanting to amend your application at this point to include 24-hour security? Uh, yes. Well, I don't think it has to be security. Or, management. Or Someone man, on management site. on-site. Yes, we on site management that. 24. Yes. Uh, also, uh, Commissioner Latour, there are multiple security cameras that, that record all the time, one pointing across the street, on premises, all around the property. So, uh, and, and yes, we would amend the application to have an on site manager. Then, 24-7? Well, i got to go to the grocery store. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. But they would be an on-site resident yeah, there yeah, for, yeah. for them to live. Okay. Then, Alan, it would ultimately be up to the person who reads the motion to include the amendment, okay. and then you would vote on. We have okay. another question. So. Mr. Stebbins. Um, the key access, is that something that you could type in, or is, would it require a card? No, it would be a key code. A key code. You can't pass it to somebody. But, but you of course, give we've, them the been, we've been talking to the security uh, advisor, so we're going with their recommendations on it. And they're the, also the same people that are the, the ones putting in the, the passcode or the key, keypad. is also going to be more putting in the security cameras and whatever, whatever they recommend. And we're, we're working with the police out actually on that. So whatever they recommend, we're going with that. So the, each resident would have a unique code. It wouldn't be yes, like one code absolutely. for the whole. Okay. And that's why we were talking about if, if there is a... a a heavy, you know, access code that's being used quite a bit. We're going to investigate that, why it's being used, and then we can actually have the security camera on that. And so there's going to be, there's going to be, we're going to, you know, meticulously scrupulate, you know, how the access to this property is. And they will actually be told that they cannot have just an ongoing access through there. It's just not, it's just not a parade route. And so we, and we hopefully, uh, we're trying to, we don't, we can't, discriminate but we would like to accommodate some of the older you know uh, applicants and not have um, and you know the younger ones and so we we we, we kind of we hopefully would get more applicants to you know older ones so that there'd be more responsibility how, yeah. how tall is the wrought iron fence six foot i believe and you're going to own and manage Yes. Or not be the on-site manager, but correct. Okay. It, it, it will be in-house management. If you want older applicants, do all the applications at 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Lights out. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, I've got a question for staff. Um, with with all of these comments, I, I didn't know if staff had any other. I don't know, suggestion is not the right word. I just want to, this area, he's right, it, it has been a sow's ear. It's had a lot of crime in that area. It's 
not something that has been beneficial to our city. And I just want to make sure everything is done. And I don't know if there's any other safeguards that we can put in place. Or since staff felt the need to uh, not recommend approval for this item, if, um, if there's anything else, I don't know. I just thought I'd give you an opportunity there or ask the question. I mean, they just amended the application to um, have on-site 24-7. Um, uh, Commissioner Bubbas, I'm not, they have camera. I don't know what else could be added at this point. And again, what all, the file, what is on the record today, that's the application and that's the project. Yes. Absolutely. And also, too, just like I said before, we were going to actually work with the police department, and um, hopefully they, you know, they would have their own code so they can come in and go as they please, and we would encourage them, actually, to, to drive through. I mean, I have no objections to having a heavy police, uh, you know, presence. I would love it, in fact. And you all have approved a planned commercial development directly across the street from this, so I expect that there will be more uh, police cruising patrol and everything there, so... That would be a benefit to the neighborhood. Absolutely. I'm sure. Yes, Mr. Seldom Washington. have I driven past a project that was this bad with an opportunity for something to be good built there. Now, I don't disagree with the gentleman, but the fact of the matter is that it's not on the table to tear down and build a house. Right. What's right. on the table is this, or it stays as a sow's ear is a nice word to put it. So I commend you for trying it. You got my vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Latour. Any other questions? We're ready for a motion. I'd like to ask a oh, gentleman okay. who's in opposition to it one question, if I may, please. Sure. Was this apartment complex there whenever you purchased your property? No, sir. When we moved there, Baseline Road was a mud road. Winston Manor was not there. Uh, Westwood Night Club came afterwards. Interstate 30 came afterwards. So, no. We were there first, and they moved in. Now, I have a, a couple you're, of things. You're going I'd back like a lot to... further than I am. I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to point this out. He's talking about the artifact of concrete. You live in a concrete house? Have you ever? Our house has been concrete for 65 years, and it's cold. It's not an R factor. It's, it's, it's like a jail cell. Those little heaters will not be enough. For their fence, that's fine. There's fences all up and down baseline. Every apartment complex has their own fence system, their own gate system, but their gates are never shut. They're always jammed open or broke. So that doesn't amount to much. How much You've thought? answered my question, sir. Thank you very much. Well, I'd just like to point out how much thought would we put into this if it was going in next door to Bass Pro Shop? Thank you. Okay. We're ready. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm charged to have one question of staff. What were the, uh, this had gone up to the city board at one point in, in some form and was denied. What was the gist of the board denial? Uh, Commissioner Berry, at the previous application, as Mr. Giles pointed out, had that parking uh, on the east side of Winston, hmm. and that raised a lot of concerns. And I think just everybody know, or a number of the board members knew the history of this site. And I think that, you know, I, there were, I forget how many board members voted, so I'm not sure if they all commented, but I know the off-site parking and then the history of this property. Okay. Well, that answers my question. Thanks. Um, I'm sorry. The, the gate issue, to his point, that would be, since it is part of this application, that would be something that code enforcement could address if that were to ever happen to this property. Same thing with the cameras and everything else in the application. Well, that uh, that would be... The planning department, because this is a planned development, so it'd be part of that approval. So it'd be zoning enforcement if one of the conditions wasn't being met, or if we found out that the gates were being left open, that we would follow up and determine that they weren't in compliance with the approved plan. And then that 
Yes, so so we could hold them accountable to that. I just want to yes. Thank you, Mr. Bevis. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to move for approval of this application as filed with the amendment that there be 24-7 on-site management. Except that, that for staff denial. And all in favor? And all opposed? Don't shoot me. <laughs> mm -hmm. It will pass. Thank you all. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you all. Ms. James, we are ready for item B, please. Item B, Alexander Mountain Preliminary Plat, file number S-1782, um, located on the south end of Main Street, Alexander, within the city of Little Rock city limits. The request is for preliminary plat approval for a subdivision located within the city of Little Rock with a portion of the subdivision located within the city limits of the city of Alexander, which is in Saline County. There are 44 lots located within the city limits of Little Rock. There are 15 lots located within the Saline County portion of the development. The applicant is seeking approval to extend city sewer service to the homes located within the Saline County portion. This will require a separate action by the Little Rock Board of Directors to allow the wastewater to allow for wastewater service to be extended to the new homes. The lots are indicated with an average width of 55 feet. The lot depths are indicated with an average of 125 feet. The applicant is requesting 20 foot front yard setbacks, 15 foot rear yard setbacks, and five foot side yard setbacks. The lots are indicated with an average lot size of 0 0.15 acres. The subdivision is proposed as a gated community developed with private streets. The plan, as submitted, does not appear to provide for a turnaround for an SU-30 vehicle attempting to enter the gate at this, and a stacking distance of 30 feet should be provided for the call box to 4th Street curb. The Main Street Island is currently located in the 4th Street right-of-way. This must be moved out of the 4th Street right-of-way prior to construction. Uh, you approved the applicant's request to, to um to change the standard of 4th Street from a minor arterial to a um, to Collector Street on your consent agenda. The street naming configuration is currently proposed is not acceptable. Main Street is a duplicate street name and the abbreviation of Alexander Mountain is not acceptable. The street name Alexander Man Mountain Pass is too long and will not fit on a street sign. All street names must be approved by Public Works staff prior to final planning. Staff is generally supportive of the applicant's request provided the comments raised at the subdivision committee and, and just now can be addressed. Uh, staff feels the development of the lots as indicated by the applicant is acceptable. There are homes located on large lots and acreage, but there are also homes which have developed in, in a similar development pattern as proposed by the applicant. Staff does recommend approval of the request. The applicant will be required to seek board of directors approval for the request to serve the homes located outside the city limits of Little Rock with sanitary sewer prior to the extension of the sewer lines to the area. Staff recommends approval of the request subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. And staff recommends the applicant address Public Works comments uh, raised, outlined in paragraph D as well as H prior to the issuance of a grading permit. Thank you, Ms. James. May we get um, the applicant, please? Yes, ma'am. It's Mark Rudder with Holloway Engineering, and uh, we're in agreement with all of staff's comments. Uh, we feel that this uh, development will be good for this area. Um, we've seen the area in general improve over the past few years, and, and this will continue that improvement. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just take a seat and hear what anybody else has to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have one card in opposition, uh, Roberta Schmidt. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, see the green line that borders all of our property 
and it's wrong. They are encroaching on our property. There is a dispute with the survey. Hope Engineers uh, is now looking at the latest survey that we had done several years ago. This property has been in conflict, oh my goodness, back into the 70s when the Wombolts and the Powells, we bought the property, 11 acres adjoining to our house, up from Elm Street all the way up to the mountain. And um, Hallie Hippolyte Powell is now deceased, but he was in and out of court with them trying to correct the discrepancy between the two surveys. And in 77, it had gone to court and a judge had ordered that the, um, that the error be corrected and in favor of Mr. Powell. So when we got a copy of that plat and compared it with ours, they're coming in on our property and we would like this not to get started until this can be settled. And uh, we are, like I said, having Mr. Uh, Jonathan Hope, who is part of Hope Engineering, going through very meticulously all of the degrees and the chains and the links and all that to see just exactly where this should sit. And we would like to be able to set up a meeting and get this figured out before they come in and bulldoze all the trees <laughs> and uh, come in on our property. Um, we're also concerned about slashing and burning. It's all woods right now. We have 15 acres adjoining to it. There are deer and foxes and rabbits and every kind of wildlife out there. And th all that property is right out my kitchen window that I look out at. And I don't want to stare at a bunch of houses. I was wondering if they'd be willing to at least leave a small swath of trees out there. And then the question of all those homes, that's 59 homes, and most people have at least one car, if not two cars. And if only half of them have two cars, that's still almost 100 cars. Fourth Street right now probably has six to 10 cars going down it a day. I mean, I could see, and we're, we're gonna come out right onto Fourth Street, we're our Elm and Fourth, trying to go to Alexander or, or down Main. How are they accommodating all of those vehicles? Right now, that 4th Street is all chewed up. City never takes care of it. Elm Street is a mess. It's only the width of a driveway. And it's my understanding that they want to use Elm Street for an emergency access way to the back of the, or the side of the property. I don't know that a fire truck could even turn onto there or, um, you know, rescue and whatever else they would need. Uh, we've had problems with animal control. Well, we've been living there since 1984. And every time there's an issue with stray animals, because it's Pulaski County and Saline County, it's Alexander, it's City of Little Rock, we're calling everybody, come take care of these animals. Well, it's not us, you've got to call the county. And then we call the county, well, it's city. And we would really just like some clarification about the traffic, about animal control, about Who's taking care of disruption? Fourth uh, of July, Main Street is obliterated with firework debris everywhere. Stuff is coming up over into the woods on our property. Nobody's managing it. Nobody takes care of it. So um, we're quite distressed. <laughs> we like progress, but we think this is way too many homes for that area. Right on 4th Street, right on the corner, is a crummy, crummy, crummy little mobile home park that's been there 50-some years with, I mean, they should all be condemned. I really wish someone would come out and look at them. I feel really bad for the people that are living in those. And most of the other um, houses, the one right next to us, right on 4th and Elm, um, should be torn down. <laughs> so I don't know what can be done. I've never come before a board before or dealt with anything like this, but I really would like a halt until we could work out some of this, if possible. 
Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Would the applicant like to address the opposition, please, and the concerns? Absolutely. This is the first time I heard anything about a survey boundary dispute, and obviously that's a very big issue. Um, in, in, in light of that, um, I'd, I'd certainly like to see what, what Hope comes up with. Do you know the timetable on that? Obviously, <clears throat> that would be resolved um, before anything could go forward. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that it's come at this late hour. Um, uh, and uh, obviously, uh, the uh, Fourth Street concern, ha uh, part of this uh, approval would be half street improvements to Fourth Street. Uh, so that would address the uh, street maintenance problem and, and uh, condition of the street. I, I'm, I'm sure that the applicant would be um, receptive to leaving some of the trees as a buffer where possible. Um, I'm not sure that, that, uh, that, it, that it would be within a buffer zone. I think it would be in the back yard of the property or whatever. but. I can't see why people wouldn't be agreeable to something like that. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know how to move forward on this, and, and you guys maybe can tell me with a boundary dispute, can you approve it contingent upon resolution of the boundary? Well, a boundary dispute's a private matter between yeah. the two property owners, so I think the commission can move forward with action on the plat, and then if something changes, then you know the it's primarily that open space area. Right. It, so that potentially would not change the configuration I, of I the lot. I didn't think so really either. But um, oh, I'm sorry that we're not, okay, that's in Saline County. So we're not that. yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. I, I, yeah. Right. Well, and this is an odd one because it it falls in two cities, it falls mm -hmm. in two counties. It, it it it's the complication of the of the city services and county services and so on and so forth, which which all can be worked out. That 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 happens from time to time. Um, but I I don't know. I and, and obviously we're we're in agreement with uh, traffic's uh, recommendations on the entrance. Um, so yeah. I, I mean, that's all I know. And I would add also that the mayor of Alexander is very supportive of this. He's working really hard to get his community up. Right. Including probably getting rid of trailers and that kind of thing. Okay, let's see what questions we have from the commissioners, please. I'd like to ask a lady to come back up, please. I'm not very good at names, so I don't remember your names. Schmidt. Schmidt. But do you know who the judge in this land dispute case is? I I didn't want to carry the the very old booklet. I do have it, and I can get the paperwork for you. I don't care, but I just thought maybe it might be Judge Garrett, and then I'd have some advice for him when I can't make it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just got through working a case with. This was back in 77 where he quieted the plaintiff and then ordered that the erroneous description be corrected. But it, it just seemed, um, like I said, Mr. Powell has been dead for 15 years or more. We bought the property from his elderly wife, and the son helped negotiate the property because it bordered and horseshoed around our house and our two acres. 
So it was 11 acre property, but most of the dispute is in the Saline County part of it. So it's not in the Pulaski County part, but um, like I said, we can sit down and work together on that. And we can even walk the property together. And There's a, another little tidbit of information that you may not be aware of, but you know those two big subdivisions that's up on top of the hill by the water tank? Yes. They've got a right of way to come out of that and come down through Alexander for their access too. Okay. I have one other question though. I mean, with all those homes, okay. you're also going to have school buses for kids and just, I, I'm just really concerned about all the, the traffic and where the buses are going to be able to sit and people lining up to get out of one, one entry exit way, you know, I mean, if there were a fire or a danger and people are trying to get out in a hurry, are they going to get stop gapped there? You know what I'm saying? And uh, and that was addressed in the beginning on the stacking and right that they have to address that. Um, would the applicant like to maybe explain the street improvement to our opposition? You want to explain what you're going to do to the street so that she feels more comfortable with her questions? Uh, to Fourth Street? Uh, yes, it's it's uh, uh, it it was to be classified as a minor minor arterial, which would mean that the half street improvement would be I think eighteen feet on each side of the street, uh, but now it's uh, uh, downgraded to collector status, which means that we will have to improve from the center line of the street. We will improve. Um, 16 and a half feet then? 18. 18. I'm sorry. Okay, 18 feet. Uh, so from the center line of 4th Street, 18 feet uh, would be improved and redone basically uh, uh, with curb and gutter. And then, of course, all the streets in, within the subdivision would be new. And then on your stacking issue, what on your cars stacking to get in and uh, yes we'll, we'll move the island uh, back to where uh, traffic requires it okay I have yes. a question for legal there are two things going on here one of which is her survey disputes in Saline County can a developer break ground with this survey being in dispute I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I, I don't want to say that they couldn't. They could. They could probably go to the judge and 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 you know, the number of things. I would. I wouldn't though. I would do a quiet title, or I would try to get an accurate survey. I mean, I don't know. Have you got two different surveyors saying two different things? Yeah. Well, that's obviously what I'm hearing. We did all of the. Our due and how 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 um, new are these surveys? Are you relying on something from thirty years ago, or are you, is this done recently? Uh, well, we we in our search of the of the previous deeds and records and et cetera, uh, this was the best boundary we could come up with. We we had no idea of any question or or difference. I think the only protection that we have as the board is the fact that this. This boundary dispute is in Saline County. We're not approving question. it, and we're not approving that portion of it. So and we're only addition, approving the plat in the Pulaski County. That's portion. correct. Okay, and it, so the Saline County and it, has to move on, has to approve this through their quorum court. Well, and, or their planning and, board. Uh, Have you been Mark, is, the, is the city of Alexander going to review the portion? Oh, oh or, yes. Or is Saline have, County going to yes, review? Uh, and they were approved in Alexander also. Yes. Okay, so you've already gone through that process. Yes. Yes, yes Mr. Latour. Uh, we've got on Commissioner Bubba's for negotiating, so I'm not negotiating, but I'm just telling you that I would sleep a lot better if you said we're going to come iron these issues out and come back in January. Now, I'm not negotiating, but... Well, and uh, 
I, I mean, I'd be happy to do that, but, but I'll tell you, additionally, I think that whatever land is on top of that mountain, I, I would think that the owner, uh, uh, this difference we're talking about, I'm sure that doesn't matter much to him. As a matter of fact, it probably gives him le less taxes, and so he'd probably be happy to <laughs> resolve it on, on your side. Uh, but honestly, I would like to get it over with, to get it voted on and get it over with. I mean, we're out, we are definitely going to have to iron out whatever survey difference there is, you know, before anything goes forward. I'm comfortable with the commission voting on the, the, plat. the Pulaski County Park. The, 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 the plat for the Pulaski County Park. Um, and then let them figure out what's going on in the Saline County area. Right. Okay. <laughs> I did that last time. <laughs> except, except if that's been already approved, then he can, he can break ground with this hanging over his head. Well, he certainly could, but then I mean, it, the, the planning commission isn't saying we're not we're not deciding who owns what. We're just saying that we're approving the plat, and and this is what it is. They're they're telling us they own it. We're not. We haven't done any title searches. We haven't. We're not giving any legal opinions. And if 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 it does come out, she will have a cause of action. She right. could go get an injunction. But that would be a court action, and that would be outside of our purview. Right. And in Saline County. Yeah. Any other questions? I only had one other question. Okay. And I just wanted to clarify, because it was kind of hazy on the, the buffer. Did you say that you were going to amend your application to have a buffer? Because you requested a buffer. This well, is a plat. I think it, this is a plat. We're not okay, talking Okay, so we're not buses. there yet. Okay. Well, we won't with a plat. We we don't ever get to buffer, and that's in okay. us, and that's in Saline County. And this okay, that's for that portion. That's okay. Well, I thought though I saw the. And there will be a final plat, won't there? This, and commissioners also. This is just a preliminary plat. They will have to come back and get approval for the final. Staff level. Staff level. They'd have to get approval for the final plat. No, we cannot approve or disapprove a buffer. Okay. That's out of our hands. And hopefully you'll have all this worked out before you submit the final plat to staff. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Well, and, and the final plat wouldn't come until after uh, construction and all improvements are in place. Okay. Um, but I, 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 I'm, I'm certain that they'd be willing to work with the landowner to, adjacent landowner to, to provide some kind of screening or whatever but 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 it, it wouldn't be required by your ordinance because it's residential versus residential okay. okay madam chair i move for approval of the application as filed with staff recommendations therein and all in favor and all opposed thank you the item does pass Thank you for coming. We do appreciate your time. Merry Christmas. <laughs> that was the last of our items on our agenda. We do have time for community. Come on up, Miss Bale. Have a communication. I'm afraid it's an obvious one. Uh, for the League of Women Voters of Pulaski County and myself, I wish both the Planning Commission and this wonderful staff a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'll see you before, just before Three Kings Day. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bell. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. We are adjourned.